Hey fellow tennis nerds, happy Saturday. I'm here with the Vortex from Prince. New racket, reissue of the Vortex model. A bit different though, very modern. Looks like uh, Optimus Prime in Transformers. No, I don't really know, but something from Transformers with this very interesting uh, bridge design here. Throw it also uh, similar to something you find in the Marvel Universe from the bad guys, most likely. Uh, it's a very cool racket uh, to me. I like the 80s kind of play with the design. Uh, has the kind of tiger style pattern here and then some other stuff going on. There's a lot going on. Kind of like the ripstick, which I like. I think it's kind of pushing the envelope a little bit or just not kind of tongue in cheek racket design. Uh, so 310 grams, it has a little bit thicker beam, but the standout feature of this frame is the 14 mains. That's fewer mains than usual. You would see 16 normally, 18 sometimes. And then you have 21 crosses. So plenty of crosses to get more directional control. Gets the center pretty tight, gets the outside pretty open for those off-center hits. I do notice some instability on off-center hits. I do feel like the sweet spot is maybe a bit smaller than I'd anticipated. The swing weight with this string Torline Caviar is about 320, which I think is good. Gives you some room for customization if you want. Playing it stock form, it plays pretty stable. Could be a little bit more stable on off-center hits. As I said, that's my, my main pet peeve. Has a kind of an interesting dynamic of launch with some spin, but also a more control from the tight string pattern. So it's a very, a very interesting experiment. I think I prefer this string pattern over the 1818. The 1818 of the Synergy 98, 98 felt a little bit wild at times. While this one doesn't feel really wild, it feels because of the tightness of the centers, center crosses, it, it feels pretty controlled on most shots. So you can flatten out the ball and you can hit with some top spin. Seems to do well on both shots. Has this kind of curved beam that should help reduce wind drag as well. Um, very interesting design. Prince, uh, you know I like their rackets generally. I think they, their, their racket designer does a really good job. Uh, I've talked to him before on my podcast, Tim. Check that one out. Uh, and yeah, this is another interesting frame. I've had it for a few months. Uh, it's gonna be released in September as far as I know. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it feels more comfortable than, than the thick beam might, might uh, tell you. Uh, so I'm enjoying it. And it's more comfortable than the TechStream Tour for sure. I must say, having played with this quite a bit now, that the, the feeling you get is that you can get quite a lot of topspin thanks to the 14 mains, but you still get that directional control if you want to flat out the ball. For me, it's kind of perfect. Uh, the, the beam, it feels a little bit thick at times, uh, especially on the one-handed backhand, as I talked about in my one-handed backhand videos. My preference is generally in like thinner beams and slightly smaller head sizes. Doesn't work that way for everyone, but that's what I noticed that I play better with on the one-hander. So that's maybe where I, I don't feel as comfortable, but on the forehand it feels great. Uh, touch shots also good, solid on the volleys and offers a nice serve. It's not, it, it kind of reminds me of the Techstream Tour in a way, but it has some other qualities and a different profile that makes it stand out. And uh, the spin also comes in this case from the elongated main strings the, with the idea with this bridge here uh, is to give the strings more movement because they get longer so uh, interesting uh, idea not unique uh, Volkel did that as well with other rackets the V engine rackets this is more extreme on this one and it looks kind of like you know a Marvel racket uh, Ultron uh, whatever you want to call it it's pretty funky design um, but I really think it's cool. I really like that they try to do something different and new. Uh, so if we look at the specs, uh, it's a 300 gram racket, so 320 grams strong approx. Uh, the balance is 6.0 head light, so pretty maneuverable. Standard length, 100 square inch head size. Swing weight, also pretty maneuverable. Uh, medium stiffness, 66 strong, so but it doesn't feel stiff and harsh on the arm. Actually feels a little bit more comfortable even than the Textreme Tour, which I talked about in a recent video. The beam width is thick in places, 25, 22 and 26 millimeters. So it has a bit of a thicker beam profile and the beam is curved to produce less wind drag because of the thick beam. So it's an interesting design idea. The composition Textreme, which they've used now for a while and I, I really like. Toron and graphite it has the anti-torsion system, which may puts the text stream and Toron in in the upper hoop and the shaft. Uh, so it's pretty solid. Really easy to block back returns with. 
produced a pretty heavy serve. Uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, these kind of pure drive style rackets, but it doesn't go all the way in power. And it has a tighter string bed in the center, which is something I talk about in a lot of videos. One reason I think the Aero Pro Drive original is perhaps the best Aero Pro or pure Aero is that it's tighter in the center. And sometimes when you get these really open string patterns, the ball tends to shoot out with it's some weird angle at times and you lose a bit of control and the ball might sail on you a bit. And I like when it's a bit tighter in the center. Uh, so this one is a thumbs up for me. It's a racket I really enjoyed uh, over this time of play testing. It took me a while to get used to, but now it kind of hangs along in the bag, uh, which is a good sign that it's, it's been in the bag. It's not only been there for the review period, but it's always so, also been in the bag generally, which is a good sign. So I can pick it up alongside my soft drive or something of the sort, or the Techstream Tour and, and play equally well pretty much with this one. The Techstream Tour feels a bit easier uh, on the one-handed back and I feel like I prefer that thinner beam uh, of that frame. Uh, so, but uh, in pretty much all aspects, this one does a good job and it feels a little bit more, a little bit softer on the art. Another very interesting racket from Prince, the player profile in this case, I would say is uh, intermediate. Uh, you can be advanced, but yeah, starting from the intermediate level, whatever that is, 3, 3.5 NTRP. It's a racket that can fit quite a broad range. You need to be open to, you need to like the design. The design is a bit out there and you need to also playing with some spin, like a more baseline style game also works, but I think it's pretty versatile. I, I've not really struggled with more touch shots with playing a little bit more creatively. Uh, so it's a pretty fun racket, helps to put spin on the ball, definitely uh, for you top spin oriented players. If you're a, a very flat hitter, I think there are better rackets for you. But if you play with some top spin, I think you'll really like this Vortex frame. Um, really hard to place it. It's um, like I said, kind of like a softer, extreme style racket even like an arrow but it's it's softer it's it's yeah it's a bit it's a very hard racket to place in the category they've, they've made a racket that has pretty good control for this typical spec 300 grams and but the, the tight string pattern helps it's medium stiffness uh, kind of like a v core uh, similar to a v core i think 100 but with a bit more control and uh, it doesn't have the quite the power level kind of like an ESO 98 in power level. Some power, but not all the way to the ESO 100 pure drive. Um, and good spin potential from the 14 mains and the elongated main strings. But it's a quite unique frame. Uh, the ripstick was easier to place in the spin category. This one lands somewhere in between because of the 1421. Um, pretty versatile frame for the range. Just, you know, give it a try, see if you like it. Uh, I did actually like it. In the beginning I thought, hmm, ah. But after playing with it for a while, I really got into the groove and I've been enjoying it now and actually played pretty well with it, I think. So, uh, fun frame. Uh, can just give thumbs up to Prince for, for testing new frames. One of the criticisms they've received from people that read Tennis Nerd and, and follow uh, the tennis industry in general is that the, it's, the product line is a little bit all over the place with the Synergy, the Ripstick and the Vortex because there were some throwback rackets, the Synergy DB26 as well. These are all reviewed on my channel and Tennis Nerd. And it's kind of hard to figure out where the lines are, uh, who is this racket for. Um, that stuff is not as easy to figure out. I guess it's, it's more of a like this design, this kind of feel appeals to me, maybe. But it, yeah, for players who like the, the kind of clear approach of Babola or Yonex, I think it is a bit tricky uh, to understand the Prince line. And I, from what I've heard, they, they're going to update the, the Textreme line in, in the near future. Uh, really keen on that. I really like the Extreme rackets um, from the Tour 95 that I tried. Uh, when they first released them and you know how much I love the Textreme Tour 100 uh, although it's a little, probably a little bit stiff on my arm but uh, these, they're excellent rackets and uh, they do have the Phantom which are also excellent uh, but now with the addition of the Ripstick, the Synergy and the Vortex it's kind of hard to understand their whole product range. There are quite a few rackets now they have the Beast reintroduced in the Chrome paint job check that out on Tennis Nerd or or uh, our affiliates tennis warehouse it looks great that's 
bringing back the beast. Uh, then they have the warrior. Uh, it's a, there are a lot of rackets to to understand and uh, keep up to date with. And uh, they don't have a lot of sponsored players, so they need to work on that and, and maybe try a different marketing approach. But I do find that the confusion around the models and which models are available where and so on uh, might be a detriment to their success because the products, they're very good. They have like a really multifaceted approach. Um, they, they're not too stiff, they're not focusing only on power, they maintain a good feel and a pretty good versatile playability in all of their frames. I really must say that that's very impressive uh, from Prince and I think they do create great products. I just think that the marketing part of it and I know they have a separate company structure and it's a little bit different from all the other, all the rest, different with the marketing budgets and so on and it must be very tricky to navigate. It would be nice if they, they could like categorize them and make a little bit better and get some push on the on the marketing of their products. I think Tennis Warehouse now is doing a good job in highlighting their products as well, but still it, it can be hard for the consumer to understand which racket is for who and so on. That was a tangent, it's not about Vortex, I just try to figure out where Vortex lies in the product range. Range. Um, I can quote Tennis Warehouse with this innovative racket. Prince delivers an explosive modern player's racket that combines spin and power with impressive feel and touch. So that's that's pretty much spot on. This is a modern racket, has good touch. Um, sometimes outside the sweet spot felt a little bit uh, unstable towards the edges, uh, but maybe bumping up the swing weight uh, could work that out well. So. I'm not too worried about that. No, it's a racket I really like, uh, in all honesty. Uh, just trying to figure out where it is in the, in the marketplace. If you're you know, open to playing with some funky looking frames and you like to add some top spin on your shots, I think you should try the Prince Vortex. Uh, fun racket. Uh, the area that didn't work for me was mainly my one-handed, but otherwise uh, very good. Yeah, that's all for this uh, Tennis Nerd review. I hope you found it uh, informative and enjoyable. Uh, please know, let me know in the comments below what you want to see next, any type of content um, and if you need help finding a racket I have the Tennis Nerd Consultation. It's a very popular service uh, these days so I, I really need to uh, ask you for a bit more patience in, I usually offer a three day, now I think I've added five days because it, I have quite a few of them to do and I do it alongside my other work and uh, yeah and I just want to put in a lot of love with these consultations because I know the feeling of being a, a tennis player that's pretty ambitious or just wants some guidance and it's like a jungle of rackets uh, and these new releases don't make it easier for us and, and a lot of players need some help like what string what racket should I use any customization on this level will this racket take me help me along to improve my game or is it completely out of my wheelhouse what should I, I use and I, I, I sense the frustration I know the frustration I've been there myself that's why I started this whole thing uh, a while back and uh, and I, I really want to make sure that I give you good advice on what models to check out and possible strings for those rackets and customizations so please bear with me you who purchase consultations uh, I do uh, love helping people uh, get you know a better setup for their game and, and uh, but sometimes yeah can, there can be some delays but I'm, I'm doing my best to to uh, fulfill them and and, and um, I'm doing my best to take care of them one by one. All right, um, if you wanna support Tennis Nerd, please check out Patreon, patreon.com slash Tennis Nerd. Patreons knew about the Vortex a long time ago and uh, that's how it is for, for a lot of my content and other rackets. It's not only just about the time, sometimes I produce completely unique content that doesn't go up on Tennis Nerd or YouTube. So if you like this type, if you like the stuff I do, and you want to send a few bucks my way, please uh, consider joining Patreon. Another way of doing that is to purchase anything uh, via my affiliate links that you find in the description. Uh, Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Euro Europe or Tennis Only. There's also a bunch of other affiliates that I, products I like that I've signed up to be an affiliate for. So if you purchase them, I get a small commission. I only do it for products I like, otherwise I think it's a little bit of bullshit. Uh, I'm not into this to uh, for, to make money to be honest. It's not my thing But I, I want to make sure I can create more content buy more rackets and uh, Review them and, and yeah, keep doing this because I love it That's it Now we let you have a nice weekend take care and don't forget to play sometimes